Hi, welcome back to Next Score. I'm Richard, and in today's video, we're talking about Springfest. This is just a little video I thought would be fun to talk about what you're most likely gonna see in a competitive environment for Springfest as a team. So without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and start talking about what I think are the top five decks that you could possibly be playing against at Team League. Starting off at number five, I'm starting with Barrel Magnes. I think Barrel Magnes has gotten a lot more popular just with the new support that it's gotten with the grade two that filters your soul to your hand and the grade one, which is just on play soul charge and it gets power every time you soul charge. So not only is the deck really fun to play because of the multi-attacking, but I think it also applies a lot of pressure as well. You have the grade one that's for greed on, which is when it's moved to the soul by the Vanguard's ability, your opponent has to guard two at a time. In addition, you also have that one grade two, which puts all the normal units from the soul to the deck. I believe is what it does, and it gets 5k for every unit you put back. That can be a really strong unit as a finisher as well. Barrow Magnes is a little bit higher up there with the multi-attacking, like aggressive play style. So I definitely think Barrow Magnes is in spot number five, just because of the multi-attacking, the aggressiveness, and the control, because Barrow Magnes also forces you, or the opponent to put all the units into their soul as well. So next up with number four, I'm putting Gravidia. So I know Gravidia is a very, very, very strong deck, but I feel like it's definitely gonna have a spot where you'll probably be playing against a bunch of Gravidia decks, but I don't think it's as close because there's been a lot more tops with other decks I would just assume if people are going to enter an event, they would want to play with the best deck they can. Even if one of the teammates playing Gravidia, I feel like there are still other spots for more consistent decks than Gravidia. So Gravidia is great because its whole focus is board control. You put meteors into your order zone, you attack with Gravidia, remove the meteors, and you get a bunch of effects. You get extra crits, you get to double the effect of your triggers when you trigger check them, and the over trigger gets really busted when you do that. And you get to retire your opponent's rear guards. So while Gravidia is similar to Barrow Magnes where it has board control, I feel like where it's lacking a little bit is the multi-attacking. So there is a lot of pressure from the fact that your triggers double, you have the new grade three that gets a crit if you retired a bunch of units on your opponent's field, and it can also help you fill up your order zone with meteors as well. So it's a good consistent card. I feel that if you are attacking with Gravidia and your opponent can consistently guard Gravidia's attack and you don't see any triggers, you could start to fall behind. I feel like standard can seem like a trigger reliant format, especially with the over trigger being very prevalent to the metagame. Gravidia is definitely up there, it definitely gets you a lot of wins, very popular deck. It was really hard to decide if I wanted to put Gravity in the top three or not, but I feel like in this case for at least for Springfest 2022, it's a hard fourth place slot. Moving on to number three, I'm putting Bastion. So I know Bastion is getting a lot more popular for players in Springfest with the recent tops that it's had for Busher Road's um, 10th anniversary, WGP. So I know Bastion's definitely up there in the top three with how well it's been doing. However, I still feel like Bastion does suffer to certain things, such as defense, if you're not getting triggers, or that grade three that counts as shield to give your Vanguard power, you're gonna kind of start to fall, behind, fall behind. You also have other decks like Seraph Snow, Gravidia, Barrow Magnes. These are decks that are gonna completely wipe your board and make it really hard for you to come back and reset up. So that's one thing that I feel like Bastion players are kind of like looking out for. Barrow, Gravidia, Seraph Snow, Seraph Pure Light, these things can counter. But if you get the Bastion deck rolling and you get that lag rally out and you start drive checking those triggers and get that over trigger potentially, you can steamroll your way to a win. Number two, I put Magnolia. So I know Magnolia is like the top winning deck for most of set four from the results that I've seen. I decided to put Magnolia at number two because it's very close to number one. It's very strong with the multi-attacking thanks to Magnolia Elder's ability to let your whole board basically attack. In the Pulse is a great card with it because it helps you get resources and it's still a really strong attacker. I believe Magnolia does still fall short to these control decks, meaning you might lose some key cards when you're building your board for like the ideal elder field, but it is pretty easy to make do with what you got since the Magnolia deck has a bunch of units that are known to transfer power, rearrange columns, just making really, really strong big attacks. And the fact that you get six of them, it, that can help you win the game really easily. I feel like the meta right now, just to summarize, is a really, really heavy multi-attack 
format. I feel like the decks that have been performing the best are either very harsh in their control, like they control very well and that's the main goal of the deck, or they attack anywhere between five to six times minimum. Let's just go ahead and move on to my number one slot for what I think is probably gonna be the most popular deck at Springfest, and I think it's gonna be Seraph Pure Light. Seraph Pure Light is just such a good card that just looking at its skill alone, I feel like people are gonna wanna play this deck at Springfest, guaranteed at least one per team. Definitely gonna, you're gonna be seeing a lot of Seraph Pure Light. Seraph Pure Light adds cards to your prison from not just your opponent's soul and their field, but also their hand. So it's a, the control deck that actually takes away cards from your opponent's hand. Pure Light also buffs your front row with power for, based on the number of cards that are in your prison. And I believe it's, if you have 10 or more, the front row gets two crit. 10 cards in the prison is really, really easy to do. So the fact that the minute that your opponent rides Pure Light, they're gonna get the crits, they're gonna get all that power, they're, they have the triple drive, they have a grade one that clones itself so that you just call it and you're just filling a board and deck thinning. Kind of insane how consistent Pure Light is. And I feel like the one way that people can get around Pure Light is going first and riding to their grade four first before they can get hit by Pure Light or they're just very conservative and just keeping their hand and their board in a way where they can rebuild it right after the Pure Light turn and win that turn. So that's pretty much it for the top five. I did wanna go over some other decks. This is a team event, so it's not like every team you're gonna play against is gonna be like the top three, four, even within like at least one of the top three and then the last two being Gravity or Barrow. I feel like people are gonna play what deck they wanna play and what they find fun, but are also reasonably competitive. So these are some honorable mentions that I wanted to bring up for what you'll probably see at Team League. First one that comes to mind is their Nirvana deck. So Maha Nirvana is a pretty good deck and you could either play it with the Order, the one that lets you get draws for every time you overdress, or you can still play with Virena Urger and do like a super early aggressive multi-attack turn. Mahar Nirvana still does reasonably well against decks like Magnolia and Bastion, so that's why I feel like you still might see it in Team League. Next, I would say is Loranoral, or however it's pronounced. Loranoral is the Lyrical Monasterio deck. I feel like you're still gonna be seeing Loranoral despite there not being support since the last year, and in despite that there's all these newer decks with newer units to play with, Loranoral is just that good of a deck that it's still relevant. Third honorable mention I wanted to say was Bruce. Bruce was always good, and I feel like it hasn't changed that much. It's kind of just the same deck, except now you have Triple Drive, and you have a Restanding Vanguard that could or could not have a crit, depending on if you get the grade three that gives it a crit. Derek, Leonard, and that other grade two that gains a crit when it restands. These are really strong pressure cards for the Bruce deck, and I feel like they can help you kind of turn around some gains and get an advantage out of your opponent. I still don't think it's gonna be in the top five, but definitely an honorable mention just because of its pure popularity, and it's still pretty decent as a deck. Fourth for honorable mentions is Flagberg. So Flagberg obviously got really great support with Inlet Pulse Dragon. Inlet Pulse is a Flagberg specific or Flagberg focused card. It was meant more for Flagberg, but it still works really well in Magnolia. So it restands when it's played with Flagberg to help you extend the number of attacks that the deck gets. And also like how it does in Magnolia, it's shoved a soul draw a card so you have more resources. I feel like Flagberg is definitely increased in popularity just because of Inlet Pulse alone. You're probably gonna be seeing Flagberg just because of that. Even though the deck didn't really shine as much in DBT03 when it first came out, I feel like Inlet Pulse alone definitely made the deck a lot more popular. Finally, for my last and fifth honorable mention spot, I put Babs Argra. I honestly put Babs Argra in the slot just because people seem to like the Babs Argra deck for not it's just its aesthetic, but for its playstyle of using order cards. Trick Moon is adorable, so there's another reason behind that. I feel like this deck alone is gonna be seen just due to people's attachment to Babs Argra and the fact that it's still pretty decent as a deck. So there you have it. That's my top five list for the decks that you'll probably be seeing at Team League with your friends for Spring Fest. Let me know what you guys think of this list in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And while you're still here, don't forget, ingaming.com for 
new custom playmats. There's the Nexus Core playmat design, like the one that I use in my videos, and there's also a separate Vanguard zone design with different colors, either in a white or black background. You guys can take a look there, and if you see any mats you like, go ahead and pick them up. It would support me and the rest of the channel, and I would really appreciate it. So that's it for the video. Thank you all for sticking around and watching it to the end, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.